Hello, Oodles and Noodles. I'm back for another gosh darn review. And today I'm going to review a book I actually read quite a while back but never got around to making a review of it. And that is the chronological first book in the Witcher series, The Last Wish, which is pretty much the basis for the television show, the first season of the television show, as far as I can recall. And it's an interesting glimpse into Geralt's life. This sh the book starts off basically with him injured and then recalling his past in small little glimpses, seven short stories that kind of show off how he got to where he is now. You don't really see much in terms of uh, his childhood. You don't really understand how he became a witcher in the first place. You get little bits and pieces about what a witcher is, what's done, but the actual nuts and bolts of it are not really explained to you in this story at least. But you do get to see kind of Geralt's personality through these different experiences that he's had. And overall, um, I mean, I'm, I'm going to say I'm not a huge, huge fan of uh, kind of flashbacky kind of stories. I don't mind flashbacks as a whole. Uh, there are some series that, that do it really well, but I tend to be someone who enjoys sort of, we're in the present tense, and then every once in a while, we get a flashback chapter, which kind of explains a backstory more, explains why someone is reacting how they are to a certain scenario or to a person. I enjoy that, but this entire book was pretty much just constant flashbacks where you're seeing uh, Geralt at different points in his life, and I'm, I'm pretty sure they're not actually chronological in that each one happens successively one after another. They're kind of like bouncing back and forth to different points of his life. But still, it was done really, really well. The fight scenes, of course, are really well crafted. I enjoyed seeing sort of this... Um, Geralt is, is, is sort of feared by everyone around him due to the fact that he is a witcher. So this, this person who has had experimentation done on him, uh, utilizing magic and potions and all sorts of other things to make him be much, much stronger. Also giving him the ability to utilize magic so that they can hunt down monsters in the world. And you get the gist of that well, within the storyline where something had happened it's not fully explained but something had happened bringing monsters into the world in the first place many many centuries ago at least or quite a long while back and the witchers were sort of reaction to that because uh, only mages generally speaking can use magic to to fight against and this is sort of a hereditary thing you're either born as a mage or you're not and witchers are a sort of subversion of that and they use monster blood and all sorts of these other things and they kind of have spread along rumors as well as just having rumors created about them where they are monsters themselves, where they're evil, where they do tons of just bad stuff, which is generally speaking just rumors. It's not actually realistic, just as it's rumored that they are unfeeling people, that they have no emotions. This is, of course, not true. They do feel Geralt is actually a very passionate, emotional person. It's just like he's been obviously taken when he was a young child, experimented on like crazy, and of course put through brutal training so that he can fight monsters. This of course will lead to someone being very, very well controlled and not a very uh, openly emotional person. Very, He's got a tight lid on his emotions. Uh, but you can see through these seven stories that he obviously cares. He's not just some butcher. He's not just some murderer who goes around uncaringly, you know, doing whatever he wants. They do kind of function off of a system where they hunt down monsters to make money. This is their living, and so they're pretty cold-blooded about it. But other than that, Geralt is an interesting character. He's someone who is a little bit flippant, I think a little bit immature in some ways, which is not surprising, really. You can be both cold and hard and uh, well-trained to the point where you're, you have a lot of discipline, but simultaneously still not have much... Uh, maturing done in your mind because obviously they don't experience life in the same way other people do they don't have to socialize in the same way they don't have to learn to function with other people and of course because other people fear them they don't really learn to properly socialize now granted um, we do get a little bit of a glimpse 
of other people interacting with Geralt as he goes along. So he's not he's not that much of an unsociable person. He just is much more of a loner. He's much more of an isolated type. And from what we're getting from this book series, this is kind of like the twilight of the Witchers. There's really not many left. Even Geralt is not really sure how many of his people are left. Um, there, There's no more Witchers being made, I think. He might be the last of the, like, the final group that had been made, at least as far as we know in this this book. Um, I don't really know how many books there are in the series as a whole, but there are a lot of them. I think there are seven or eight, and there might be some other extras that go along on the side, uh, but there's, there's quite a few. So I'm not sure exactly how much gets expounded upon if the other books in the series kind of flesh out more his backstory how much into the future it goes. These seven stories do kind of give us a glimpse of what might come in the future. There is sort of a prophetic, some big cataclysm is going to happen in the future that Geralt is really going to be part of. There's going to be a lot of blood, a lot of violence, a lot of death. Um, the, the, these seven stories that we do see within this though are much more of a microcosm. It's him being involved in either taking care of a singular monster in an area or getting involved with some nobility in one place and having to deal with their political squabbles. And it's much more of a showcasing of his, his ethics code, so to speak, how he's going to function in relation to the people around him, what he believes is right and what is wrong. And so he makes some really interesting decisions in each of these scenarios. So I definitely think it's worthwhile to read. I think the TV show gives a nice little glimpse of it. They did it relatively well. I know a lot of people shit on it. And now that I've read the book, I did watch this, the show first. Now that I've read the book, the show does certain things much better, I think, and I. But but definitely the expounding upon Yennefer's character. So Yennefer is another. I mean, she's barely in the stories in this one. She's only in. I think she's in one of the stories in the Last Wish. So, you don't get that much backstory to her. Uh, I think the show did a, a decently good job showing what a selfish little pain in the ass she is. But at the same time, uh, there was a lot of weirdness that I, I'm going to guess is, is attached much more to another novel in the series. Because there's a lot of stuff that happened in the series, uh, the TV show that did not happen in the book. So I'm kind of rambling back and forth here. Overall, fight scenes, really, really great. I still really enjoyed uh, the... Even though it was kind of annoying flashing back to so many different parts, each story itself was a, was was nicely done. There was a nice flow to it. The characters around, even though you're only introduced them for a couple of chapters and then you don't see them again, they're really interesting. Everybody's well fleshed out and you kind of, you're sort of being taught how the world views witchers and how the world is as a whole through each of these small stories. So if the further novels basically focus in much more on one present time moment in Geralt's life, I think just from reading The Last Wish, you'll be able to understand a little bit more of the culture around and uh, why Geralt is the way he is. Whereas if I'm correct in this, The Last Wish is not the first book that was written. Uh, so you could read this later on read another book first but this book this book is recommended first because it's going to timeline wise just explain a lot more for you and make the other books in the series make a lot more sense at least that's the way i remember reading it all and man I, it, it has been quite a few when did i read this book i think i read it like two more two months ago uh, maybe even longer actually i just found it in my Kindle the other day and realized I never did a review on it. Now I'm kind of going off the top of my head, but I still recall enjoying quite a bit. I blew through this novel, I think in two days, maybe three days relatively quickly during the week in, in between work. And so it, it was a, it was a quick read. The floor was really nice. Action scenes were really good. The storylines were fun and entertaining and really, really helped develop our main character, Geralt. And in relation to the television show, it was actually quite fun to see. I've watched a few television shows that were based off of books, such as like Altered Carbon. Altered Carbon had 
a real, at least for me, I really enjoyed the first season of Altered Carbon. When I read the book, I did not enjoy it at all, at all, which is rare. Usually it's the reverse. Whereas with The Last Wish and with the first season of The Witcher, I actually found they meshed really well together. There wasn't anything huge that stood out to me that was bothersome. Um, same thing with the Wheel of Time, you know, the Wheel of Time first season, I still haven't finished it just because the first few episodes just bugged me so much. Although I am gonna get to it eventually and finish off the first season and then do a review of that. Oh, God, the Wheel of Time. I gotta mentally prepare myself to finish off the rest of that season because I'm just, I'm scared of what else they might have done. But yeah, check out this book. This is gonna be a pretty quick review because obviously I'm, I'm going off of what I remember quite a while back, but uh, it is worth the read. There's a reason why the Witcher series is as famous as it is. And I think actually, if you wanna understand even more of this, I would actually recommend, even though it's not a fantastic film, Netflix came out with a Witcher animated uh, film based off of Geralt's teacher, the person who brought him in. Uh, to become a witcher when he was younger and his life and what had actually happened to the witchers beforehand and why Geralt is the last witcher to be made or one of the last witchers to be made. And so I would actually recommend watching that movie first, then read The Last Wish. And then if you want sort of to get a little bit more visual pleasure, then watch the TV show. I think in that order, you'll kind of really enjoy it all. Uh, and that's about it for today. Folks, I'm going to be finishing off the first book in the Deathgate Cycle by Margaret Weiss in not long, Dragon Wing, which is a book series, actually seven books that I read God, like 10, 15 years ago. And I just recently got back into it and I'm really enjoying it so far. It's got a nice little mix. So I'll be doing a review of that in not long. And after that, we'll just keep on rolling. We'll just keep on rolling, folks. Let me know what you think down below. I know this has not been a super fleshed out review, but I just want to put something out just for fun. And uh, if you want, check out the website, geektales.ca, and have yourself a nice weekend.